can see the yarn as it's winding. Let's see. Yeah, now you can see the yarn as it's winding too. Sure, it doesn't hit back though. Move it back just a tad bit. There we go. Anyone decides to join me this morning I'm winding a bunch of yarn for orders and thought that it would be a good time to impromptu answer some questions you might have whether it's about winding yarn or anything else craft related so uh, I'm gonna be here a while if you want to join me that'd be great This morning I'm winding three of my brand new hand painted colorways that I just dyed since the new year. The one on the Swift is called Wild Orchid and it goes from a sapphire blue to a light lilac to a deep blue green teal. More blue than green on the teal. And then I have red dragon fruit which goes from a very saturated beautiful red the color of lipstick and nail polish that I love. And then it goes to a very tonal bright pink. And hold on a second, just gotta, bamboo fiber doesn't have memory like animal fiber does. So it's a little tougher to, it, it gets a little sticky next to other fibers. So it's just important to massage the fibers if they get stuck while you're winding does not mean it's tangled. And then this is the third colorway that I dyed. It goes from a very warm orange to a gold to a pale yellow to a jade green that's quite bright and beautiful. I dyed both of them in both Be So Fine and Be So Sporty, which are my fingering weight and sport weight bamboo yarns. And every order comes wound into a center full cake comes with a drawstring, drawstring storage bag and a pot of Rapture, which is my all natural delicate wash. If you haven't used Rapture before or any of the Eucalan products, you're really in for a treat. It's an all natural, no rinse delicate wash that is non-toxic, biodegradable, safe enough to eat, not that you should. Um, so what that means is that it's safe enough to use on your pets. It's safe to use on your baby clothing. It's fantastic on anything with elastic, like lingerie or swimwear or athletic wear, because it doesn't break down, it doesn't have the harsh chemicals that break down the fibers of the elastic. So it makes everything last longer. It's really an amazing product. And the only scents they use are essential oils, so it makes it even more natural and really just wonderful. Uh, Rapture has the essential oil of night blooming jasmine and it just smells heavenly. I use it in my washing machine for um, my sheets and on delicate and if I, if I do it on delicate you can do your lingerie and swimwear in there as well. Um, I also put it in a spray bottle for sprucing up my upholstered furniture. Um, what else? It's good for washing makeup brushes and um, you can even polish jewelry with it. It's really a wonderful product. Highly concentrated. It, with every yarn purchase, I include a single pod, which is good for one wash, but if you buy it by the bottle, it's highly concentrated. Let's not hit the camera. <laughs> okay, so we've got one done. This is sporty. I put sporty in gold bags, and I put uh, Be So Fine in the silver bags so I can tell them apart from a distance. So the yarn goes in. and rapture on top, just like that. Good morning, Judy. Ah, got carried away. <laughs> you wanna make sure all your 
Good way to make sure that all your strings are going in the right direction is hang on to one of the ties and pull by it and make sure that everything is to the right and left of it and nothing's going over the tie. That's what I do. And then I give it a good snap. And then we're ready to go. this would be a great way for people to see what happens when you're actually winding yarn. It's one thing to make a video and of course Murphy's Law would be, I mean, I guess maybe not Murphy's Law, but when you want to try to find problems to do troubleshooting, you don't find them. So uh, I thought doing multiple hanks in a row this morning might be a great way to find those problems to show you how to troubleshoot them. Oh, and I see a question. So Oh, thank you, Judy. It really is. I hope the colors come through on the uh, camera this morning. It goes from a very warm gold, uh, a very warm orange to a gold, very much like a goldfish or a koi fish, and then it transitions to a pale yellow and then onto a really bright uh, jade green. Really pretty. I see another. I'm going to have to go back over there. Then the other thing, oh, when you have to stop while you're winding, here's another trick. You really have to slow it down so that you, what'll happen is if this will keep winding when you stop and you can create another mess. Oh, hi, Eliza. Thanks for joining. Hi, Chris. Thank you for joining. For those of you joining now, I am just doing an impromptu Q&A. If anyone has any craft-related questions while I wind all of this yarn, these are my three new colorways. For, uh, for 2017. I just, well actually, the first three, I'm not, I, as with all of my hand paints, I only do limited runs. So when they're gone, they're gone. Um, but I, the one on the Swift right now is Goldfish Pond. Then I have Red Dragon Fruit and Wild Orchid. And all of my yarn comes, is sold wound into a center pull hank. Here's another thing that goes wrong sometimes. When you stop paying attention, the yarn wound twice around the spiral hook here. And what happens is you start to hear a grinding noise, but not as bad as like gears, but you hear a grinding noise. And what it does is puts way too much tension on the yarn. So if you don't pay attention right away, it makes this get too tight on the outside of a softer tension on the inside. And you can create a major problem with your hank. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Thank you, Eliza. I'm glad you like them. Uh, all three colorways were dyed in both Be So Fine and Be So Sporty, uh, my fingering weight and sport weight yarns. And like I was saying, they come wound into a center pull ball in a drawstring pouch, and they come with a pod of Rapture, my all-natural delicate wash. And I was just kind of hoping that in between anyone's questions this morning, that if I have any trouble shooting while winding, it was a great opportunity to show you live, literally, how to fix problems as they're happening. I've done some videos on how to wind yarn before, but it just seems like every time I look to have a problem to show troubleshooting, it never works out the way I want. So at least this way, um, I'm bound to run into one problem or another, and I can show you how to solve it from there. Okay, so because the camera is very close to the um, because the camera is very close to the Swift, I'm being really careful at the end because what'll happen is it'll come out like this if you're going really quickly, and I don't want that to happen because I don't want the camera to fall down. Okay, so this is a sporty, so it goes in a gold bag, 
So we're just going to pop that in there with a pot of Rapture on top. On to Red Dragon Fruit. This is also a sport, Be So Sporty. Let's give it a good snap. Straighten out some of those fibers. Really helps with the amount of tangles you may end up having as you're winding if you give the hank a good snap at the beginning. So then I'm going to find the tie, cut it, and then unwrap all of the rest of the ties from there. <laughs> I do too, Eliza. Red dragon fruit I think would make a gorgeous sweater. I would really like a sweater in red dragon fruit. I would like a shawl, a lace shawl in Goldfish Pond, and I think I would like anything at all in Wild Orchid. <laughs> I, think, I, I don't know, how do you pick what's your favorite, right? Um, but I think a garment in this tonal red and pink would just be exquisite. It would almost be like that heathered kind of a look. I can't wait to see them worked up. But yeah, I would definitely, like a simple top, you know, something that doesn't even have lace. Just plain stockinette or plain double crochet, whether you knit or crochet, would be just amazing. Let the yarn do the subtle work for you. You don't need to do anything fancy with uh, with this yarn. I think it'd be just, actually lace would be pretty too. Ah, the choices, right? <laughs> How it's so hard to decide things. I think this would be pretty beaded. They'd all be pretty beaded. And in fact, what yarn wouldn't be pretty beaded? Oh, anybody that watched last night, if you haven't had a chance to go to my YouTube channel yet, I thought you might like to see what I finished. How cute is that? Now, if you wanna learn how to make this, make sure you go to my YouTube channel. If you go back to the live broadcast from last night, I did put up a link to the tutorial video on how to make it. I am so in love with this. I wanted to do it forever and uh, finally got around to it yesterday. I've had the supplies for like almost a year. It's crazy. But very happy with how it turned out. I actually even had more of the big beads than I needed for it. So um, I think I could actually, what I was thinking is, you know how when you do a lace stitch pattern, how it's tiled, right? It's either offset or up and down. I wanted to come up with some sort of tile pattern with the big, medium, and little beads and then make that pattern all around one of these bases. I think that would be amazing. <laughs> and then they also had a container like this that had colored beads in it. So imagine picking colors that went together and making a pattern in the color or the sizes. Um, this could be a whole new series of fun. Great gift too. I mean, I think a lot of people would like that for a gift whether you put a candle in it like I did, or you could even put a flowering plant or just a green plant. I think it'd be pretty as a plant holder too. Oh, I see another comment. Let me slow this bad boy down. Oh, good, Eliza. Just be careful with the hot glue gun. If she hasn't used one before, um, you know, I've gotten quite used to getting burned by it because I'm a messy crafter. I don't think I'll ever, I'm a messy cook and a messy crafter, I can't help it, um, so I just embrace it. But um, if you're gonna let her use the hot glue gun, just be super duper careful, or maybe you put the glue down and then she puts the beads on. Um, just, I don't know what your experience is with hot glue guns and your daughter, just, just a word of caution. <laughs> I hope you find the beads though. Please send me a picture when you do, I wanna see what you find. I'm gonna take a look at the next message when I finish this one. But I'm gonna slow it down at the end so I don't knock out the camera. And there we go. Another one ready for shipping. <laughs> okay, so I pull the center off first so that I have the center pull, give it a little squeeze. Gold bags are for sporty, silver are for fine. That's the way I tell them apart here before I ship them. And we're all set and ready to go. So what was that? All of... Oh, good, good, good. Good, glad, glad to hear that. Because I mean, once she gets used to it, there's so much you can do with a hot glue gun, so much. 
All right, now we're back to Wild Orchid. And if you've seen any of the photos that I've posted of this color, of any of the colors, I actually uh, chose these based on inspiration photos. And I had some really cool inspiration photos. There's a, an orchid that is very blue and violet. And that's where I took my inspiration for the Wild Orchid colorway. And I just played around with adding some pop of blue. And this is definitely more of a teal blue. It has a lot of green tones in it, but it's, you know how teal can either be more peacock because it's more green or more, or more blue? Well, this one's definitely a more blue teal. Can't think of a good color to describe it to, but definitely on the bluer side of teal. More of a deep ocean color, like an Atlantic ocean color. And then we've got that sapphire blue violet on the other side that, oh, I just love. Okay, the beginning of the hank is where I usually manually get started. Just to make sure there's no stickies there and I've got all the stickiness out, it looks like. So now we'll get started. And if I have to go back and massage the strands, I will. It's just, I just thought it was really important to show you that if you do have to wind yarn, most of the time it is not tangled. It looks like it is. There's so many strands there. I get how it looks tangled, but it's not. You just have to massage the stickiness out of them. They stick together sometimes, especially if your fibers are not animal based. They're even stickier to each other. But um, if you just have a little patience and a little faith that it's not tangled, um, you can have success at winding every time. I know, I wind all day long it seems like, well at least half the day. Now that I've offered free winding on my website uh, for all sales, I do a lot of winding. <laughs> but that's all right, I'm used to it now. Usually I watch TV while I wind, but I thought it would be fun to uh, share this with others this morning. See, I just gave it a little tug. That rarely works. I usually have to walk over to massage it out, so that's always a bonus. Oh, thank you, Judy. I'm glad you like it. Still don't. I mean, it'll depend on how quickly it sells, whether or not I get to knit or crochet any uh, patterns out of it. Um, and I'm backed up right now. I'm doing two sweater. A friend of mine is writing a book and I don't know if you remember, but I've, di I've contributed designs to other various artist books before. I've done a lot for Robin Chichula books over the years and Sharon Silverman. And Sharon recently contacted me about a new book she's doing and I'm crocheting two sweaters for her book. And uh, oh my God, they're amazing. Um, one of them is in Be So Sporty, one's in Be So Fine and they're almost done. I got a job yesterday for doing two crochet projects for a special kit for a company um, in Be So Brave. And I don't know how I managed to do it, but I got the job around noon yesterday and by five o'clock I had one project done and the other one half done. Um, I guess that's what happens when you get super excited about something. But it's worsted weight wool too, right? Be so. Now this is something that happens, it's weird sometimes. It's the tail. The tail on the other end got a little frayed. And for some reason, as you're going around, it'll get stuck to your working yarn. I don't know how it happens. It's going so fast. I don't know how they get stuck. But I had to come over here and figure out which one was the working yarn and which one was the tail. You don't want to cut until you know. Otherwise, you could be cutting your working yarn and be just slightly attached to the frayed end of the other tail. So now what I'm gonna do is tuck this one to the inside of the Swift so it doesn't do that anymore. And we'll come back over here and keep winding. Oh, I don't know if you can see the picture on the wall back there. If anyone can see that, that's one of my yarn on canvas um, projects and I'm pretty close to starting a video tutorial series on how to make those. Um, still working on the logistics. Some projects are difficult to videotape while I'm doing for the videos. And I know big video production companies have lots of amazing equipment and they have all the tools to do overhead shots and all the different and multiple angles. And um, I don't. 
I do everything from my iPhone, a couple of tripods, and a couple of those Gorilla tripods that have feet and will attach to anything. And you wouldn't believe how far I get with um, my Ot Light and my Gorilla tripod. Anyway, it's not the most uh, it's not the most effective for over overhead shots. It works great for sh close up things like when I'm doing handwork for knitting and crochet. It works fine. But there are other types of projects that take up more space, like the yarn craft, and I don't have an overhead, I don't have the tripod for an overhead shot that big. So, let me show you something real quick. I've been working on making a frame out of PVC pipes. <laughs> the only problem is Home Depot doesn't sell all of the types of joints that I want. And why? Well, Duh, because it's for plumbing, not for building YouTube video stu studios, right? So, um, so I'm trying to come up with some creative ideas for how to use the types of joins that they sold there and create the type of framework that I need. I want something that stands about three feet over my workspace so that you can see a larger area of the workspace and also obviously not see the framework in the uh, shot. So I'm halfway through that and leaving it out until I finish because as soon as I finish it I can start the yarn, yarn on canvas series and I'm really excited to show people how to do that. It's quick, it's easy, and it looks fancy. What a combination, right? <laughs> and my god, you can use scrap yarns. I don't mean garbage yarns, I mean leftovers from your good projects. Oh, just anything. You could use all sorts of stuff. I can't wait to explore that more. I have probably six pieces in my house. I think most of the artwork in my house is actually yarn craft, but um, I haven't been able to show it yet because I don't have the right equipment to show you. So soon. I even have my saw up in the house. <laughs> because I saw all the pieces at Home Depot, but apparently didn't get all the sizes I really needed. You know, you have an idea when you go into the store, and then when you get home, you realize it wasn't the perfect idea, so I have to cut some more. But orders come first. <laughs> wow, another one that I was able to get easily. Okay, let's see if we can find a troubleshooting spot. In the meantime, if anybody has any questions or wants to talk about anything, please don't be shy. Oh, here we go. All right, now I don't know if you can see this, but it looks nasty. We've got a couple of wraps here, a couple of wraps here, it looks like it's spiraling around and it looks it looks like a spiral here and it looks like a knot there. And in the world of untangling knots, we all know that that doesn't look good. But watch this. Voila. Looks are deceiving when you're winding yarn. When you see a snag while you're winding yarn, I'm here to tell you it's deceiving. It's not what it looks like. And it's not, it just isn't. Thank God, <laughs> I'm glad it's easier than it looks. It just makes me sad when someone has a problem at home because they don't know. I mean, oh God, how many thousands of balls of yarn have I wound into center pull cakes at this point in my life? I mean, beyond count. So, you know, a, a hobbyist at home who doesn't wind yarn for a living like I do doesn't have that same experience and it's not like it's knowledge that's readily available either so I just every chance I get I like to share my knowledge about it and that it's so much easier than it looks as soon as you just know how to do it properly there's just those little tips and tricks that can go from disaster to delightfully easy Don't go too fast. That's my other, that's probably my biggest um, mistake is that I get 
you know, oh my God, I've got to get done in time for the post office to close. I got to pick up my son. I've got to do this. I've got that deadline, whatever. Rushing this means you're going to take twice as long at least because it's going to go flying off and go in the corner and you're going to have to start all over if you can get it to start all over. So don't go too fast. Not only does it make it fly off sometimes, but sometimes it'll cause problems from the swift to the, hang or to the winder as well. You never want to go too fast. Especially if you have a problem over there, it just exasperates it because of the extra tension. If it stops while you're going fast, the tension is that much greater. So just take your time. And pay attention. It's not the time to be on the phone. Definitely not texting. It just it doesn't work. You think it's going to work until you have a problem and then you're like, crap, I knew I shouldn't do that. Ask me how I know. <laughs> All right, I've got a few more here to wrap up. Here's one of the finds. Oh, maybe I should show you the comparison between the two. Let's see, here's a fine and a sporty in red dragon fruit. See how much finer that is? No pun intended. <laughs> so that would be the fingering weight, 650 yards, and that's the sport weight, 325 yards. So the fingering weight, I put in a silver bag. Still gets a pot of rapture. I'm going to get over to shipping now, so I will chat with you all later. Thanks for everybody who joined me today. Bye.